Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Guy's Home Kitchen. We got a special treat tonight. Tonight we're making pork chops, a double, nice thick double cut pork chop and with a peach puree. So first time doing a puree on the show so you guys can learn and see how that's done uh, along with some caramelized onion for the top. And we also made a last minute addition. We're going to be making uh, my famous garlic smashed potatoes. Um, so we'll be making that as a side for you as well tonight. So stay tuned, join in, please share, share, share this video so more and more people could watch. And I'll see you in a second. Let's get saucy. Okay, everybody, we're back. Hope you're ready for a really good show. Here is the star of the event tonight. We have a double cut pork chop. This is a porterhouse type of cut from the butcher where you get the, the, the New York strip loin, which is right here, so the pork loin, and then you get a piece of the filet mignon, if this was beef, but this is pork, so this is the pork tenderloin. So you get the best of both worlds. We're going to sear this in a very similar fashion as the um, when I did the steak for you guys, how to cook the perfect steak. So if you haven't watched that yet, go ahead. But this method is, is pretty much the same method. The difference was the brine. So in this brine is water, salt, and sugar, okay? And I let it go. I started at like 11 a.m., so it's about seven hours now. Um, and we are, um, if you can let it go overnight, that's better. But because it was a shorter time, what I did is I added a little bit more salt and a little bit more sugar than I normally would just because I wanted to go faster. And that's a little shortcut with brines if you don't have time. So what I'm going to do is let this sit out for a second because this has to be dry when we go to sear this. You always want a, a dry piece of meat, as dry as possible when you sear uh, because the moisture will prevent it from getting a nice crust because you're adding water, moisture, okay? So we're actually gonna start with the onions. We're gonna do the onions and the peach puree first and get that going, and then we'll come back and sear the pork and get the potatoes in, and then we'll wrap it, bring it all together at the end. All right, so for the onions, it's just a sweet onion, and um, I just cut it, I cut it in half, and then you just slice it this way, like about quarter inch slices. Okay, and that's it. So, we're gonna get the stove going. I'm going on a medium heat tonight for the onion. Okay, and we are going to add a little bit of butter and some oil and then the onions. The reason I'm going medium on the onions is because I want these to cook um, somewhat slow, not super slow because the natural sugar in the onion will um, create that caramelization. So, uh, cause I'm not gonna add any, any sugar to it. Okay, so let's get the butter in and we'll get some oil in the pan with it. Okay, might need this later. Got a full house tonight. This is this is what I'm going to use for the peaches. So as soon as this goes in, we'll get this going. I'm actually going to get the uh, the big one going here for the cast iron. So what you hear is the water that's in the butter mixing with the oil. Okay, let's get the onions in. Please don't forget to share this video, like, comment, interact as much as possible if you're watching live. Even if you're watching this recorded, that's cool too. I do monitor the comments, so go ahead and comment away. So these are the onions that will, it's got oil and butter in here, and these are just going to cook down for almost the entire show and get to a very nice brown caramelized consistency. I'm just going to turn this up a hair. 
Okay. Well, that's going. I'm gonna get ready for the peaches. So we come back to the cutting board. And the way I do the peaches is I just take my knife and cut around the pit like this. Okay. Same way I do an avocado. And then that half's done. This half, just take your thumb, pull it out. That's it. Okay. So to slice them, I'm going to do like thirds like this. Okay. That's, that's kind of the size I want. Little wedges like this. If you're just joining, we're making pork chops tonight. Nice, super moist from a brine, double cut porterhouse pork chop with a peach puree, which I'm preparing now, and some caramelized onions with a side of garlic smashed potatoes. Okay, now that the peaches are done, I'm gonna get them in the pot. Just like this. Get this cooking. A full house on the stove tonight. This is simple syrup, which is equal parts water and sugar. Easy to make. All you do is take a cup of water, a cup of sugar, two cups of water, two cups of sugar. You get it. Put it on medium heat. Just keep stirring until it's just dissolved. Turn it off. Let it cool down. And you got simple syrup. I actually made this last week uh, for some cocktails, um, so I'm going to reuse it here. And basically, I'm going to sort of poach these peaches in that simple syrup to make them a little bit sweeter. <clears throat> okay, and so these are going to tenderize and sweeten up in here. And also for the peat puree for later, I got cinnamon and freshly ground nutmeg and that's gonna be used in our blender when we make the puree. So right after I add the peaches to here, grate that in, and we'll add a hair of simple syrup if we need to thin it out any bit, and a little bit of butter to kind of make it super glossy. And then we'll be using that for the um, puree. The onions, oh man, they're already starting to smell really good. Can you smell over there? Yeah, yeah, these are good. Okay, probably got it too high. So you, you, but when it comes to caramelizing onions, it's kind of like a searing steak, if you will. You, you want the caramelization to happen, so less movement the better. As soon as I see these brown, I, I can see it browning on the edges. Uh, you can see that on the zoomed in cam here, but you can see on the edges here some browning, so it's just starting to happen. This is getting piping hot, so I'm gonna let this get a little bit of uh, hair longer. I'm using avocado oil to sear the um, meat because this has this oil has the highest um, uh, burning, you know, smoke point, I guess. Uh, so it allows the oil to get hot the hottest it can because you the hot, you want this to be as hot as possible when you sear. So, just gonna add a little bit in like this. Okay, so here's the pork from before. I had this in the brine for seven hours. Um, really simple brine, salt, sugar, water. And uh, you could add aromatics if you want to it. You could go ahead and do that. I've tried that before and, and ultimately my preference has always come back to just the simpler the better because the simple brine basically makes the meat the star of the show. You're not really changing the flavor of the meat by, um, by adding aromatics, but if that's what you want, if that's your goal, go ahead and add it. I mean, sage, peppercorns, um, rosemary. I mean, you do a lot with it. So, actually, I'm gonna do give this a quick stir okay so you see that that's the caramelization we're looking for except it's got to go all the way so this still has a lot more time believe it or not okay 
and we are really kicking here. So that's great. In goes the meats. So typically, here's a little trick. Typically, a lot of people put their meat in the center. Okay, it makes sense. That's what you think is the hottest part of the pan. Reality is the edges are the hottest part of the pan. So I'm gonna put this right on the edge as possible. Press it down. The reason I'm pressing is so that I could get really, really good contact with the cast iron and not touch it. I'm going to let that go for a few minutes, two or three, I'm gonna get this on. Two or three minutes uh, until it's really, really nice. So we got a lot going on here. We got the onions caramelizing right now. We got the peaches getting poached in some simple syrup. They're just, uh, just got a few more minutes until that boils. Once it comes to a boil, I'm gonna reduce it. Just kind of let it simmer in that. I got the water for the potatoes in here, which I'm going to add right now, because these are gonna take about 20 minutes. So we're really cooking tonight, folks. Tuned in for a good one. Next week we're doing, uh, we're making homemade gnocchi next week. So um, if you like gnocchi and you ever want to make gnocchi, um, cooking a very basic but very traditional gnocchi uh, next week, just potato and flour. And uh, I'm gonna make a cream sauce for it. Uh, there goes our smoke alarm. Always know when you're cooking in this house and then that goes off. Okay, so let those boil. These are doing their job. Okay. This is coming up. And let's check to see if this is ready to fit. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a nice golden. Okay, so remember how I said the edges are the hottest. I just cooked on this side. This side has been getting super piping hot while this has been cooking. So I'm actually going to finish the sear on this side because that is the hotter side right now. Let this go for a few minutes, just like that. Get a nice color, like, oh man, that's a beautiful color right there. Really nice color. And got any questions, go ahead and ask. Don't worry. That's just a smoke alarm from the smoke. I'm working on saving up for a new hood here, so hopefully we can make that addition sometime soon. All right, my wife's over there doing doing this with the smoke alarm. It's a family affair here, guys. Home kitchen. Okay, caramelized onions. We got the pork going. We got our peaches just coming up to a boil, which I'm going to reduce a little bit. Peach, these peaches are going to be used for a puree. Um, I actually was originally going to be doing an apricot puree tonight, not a peach puree, because um, I like apricot better. But when I went to the market, they didn't have apricots. So I got the next best thing from an apricot perspective, which I could have went with peaches or I could have went with nectarines. I uh, decided on peaches. It's a little be a little bit more subtle uh, but you know when it comes to cooking you know improvisation is really an important skill so um, you know improv when you're cooking or improv even when you're going to prep or shopping it comes in handy so no big deal we're just doing peaches you could do anything you could do apples here that'd be really nice you could do nectarines peaches um, mango could work probably Okay, we are going to get this off. So that's perfect right there. Transfer this to my 
pan here. And I'm going to, I want to stick this in the, um, in the strip side, not the loin side. So this goes right into the center. Hot. Okay. And right into the oven. I got the oven on 325. It's going right in the center. I'm going to cook in the oven till 140 because I want it to finish around between 145 and 150. So the carryover heat will, um, you know, once I take it out of the oven, it's still going to cook. That's a carryover cooking. So I'm going to set this to pork chop. No, 140, not 145. Start cook. Okay. I am going to help out Don over there and get this to stop smoking. Okay, what's the question? Fig? Yeah, fig is really nice. Uh, fig would work well too. That's really, really sweet. Same method. Actually, with figs, if you want, you can even um, you can even grill them and then puree them if you want to do a puree, or you can leave them whole. Also, I'm going to reserve about two or three slices of the peaches. Um, and then finish them off in the cast iron later because uh, for garnish for the, for the plating. Okay, these caramelized onions are looking really nice. Not quite done yet. But they're getting there. These peaches are nice. Let's see how tender they are. Yeah. Getting there. Who asked that question? Sage. Yes, Sage. Please tell me the name and the question, okay? Sage, yes, you can absolutely. Thanks for tuning in again, Sage. You've been uh, a very loyal viewer of Guys Home Kitchen. But yes, figs work, will work great with this. Apples are kind of the classic fruit. Um, but another version of this. So this is, this is hitting the sweet and savory from a fruit and onion perspective. Um, but what you could also do is like a maple, like maple syrup, brown sugar, bourbon type of play with the pork. Um, and, you know, get, get that really nice. And actually, I'm probably going to do that one time. Um, and with that one, what I actually like to do is smoke it briefly in oak um, right before I sear it I got a smoker tabletop smoker it's just like a dome that uh, you just you know you'll see when I do the show but basically it just gives it like a quick surface level of smoke you're not really looking for like a barbecue smoke where you're penetrating the smoke into the meat deeply you're just looking for a surface so when you taste it you got that essence of oak okay the onions are looking good so by now, if you notice, my flame on the onions is, is really low because I don't want them to burn. <clears throat> Potatoes are looking good. What I'm actually going to do is move the potatoes over because it needs a bigger flame. The flame's just too small, but I can put the onions there. I'll leave them here so you can see it. Okay. These are almost done. Probably another, maybe another five minutes. We'll see. What I'm going to be mixing the potatoes with is garlic. I got tons of garlic. Cream cheese and sour cream. I like to prefer that over butter and milk, which is usually the traditional way. 
this gives it more body. It definitely adds the the, the fat that it needs and the, and the moisture, um, but it's a better flavor in my opinion. Where did I put my fork? There it is. Peaches are looking great. Temperature on the pork is 71 degrees. That's going nicely. Okay, so the peaches are almost done. We can make our puree. I uh, just want them to get a little bit more tender. Skin's already off, some of them, which is a bonus. Okay, potatoes coming up. Hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. Let me know in the comments if you like what you see. I'm really excited to show you the finished product. Uh, I'm going to be doing a very special presentation with the dish tonight. Um, so it's really cool. I got a tool I'll show you that forms the, um, it's going to form the potatoes into a cylinder. Uh, it's a really great investment into your kitchen, it's super inexpensive, 20 bucks maybe, um, but really knocks up on the presentation level, especially when you're cooking for some friends or other special guests and family and you you wanna take your cooking to the next level, like do, do your normal thing, but then make it look really awesome and they will remember that. Okay, these are about done. So I'm going to turn those heat off. These are also kind of done. So I'm going to come. Let's see. Oh, too much shit. Okay. So I'm going to pick three nice ones use here that and I'll take you you look good just like that and then for the rest of you you're going in here We're making our puree. So the peaches go in. Just like this. Okay. And add a hair of water, not much. And then we're gonna rock it. So we go power manual and we go. Done with the puree. Mmm, that's really good. Let me uh, look at these. I don't mess that up. Those are looking good. Okay, I need to add the cinnamon. Do 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 do. And nutmeg. Very fall flavor. Fall essence here. The essence of fall. And there's nutmeg. And what makes this really great, really gloss, super glossy, is just a little bit of butter. So you wanna, as soon as you drop the butter in, you don't want that really to melt. You just want it to be incorporated, so we're gonna go. Okay, 
everything's coming together. How are we on the meat? All right, 86 degrees. All right, I'm still going. Okay, so let's taste this before we take it off. So I got some nice caramelization going on the peaches here, which is really great. It's going to make a really great garnish. This is the puree right here. Kind of looks like baby food, but oh man, wow, that's good. It's sweet, but not too sweet. And the nutmeg and the cinnamon really make it stand out here. So now that we got this done, this is going to come off. And since we're using it right now, we're just going to leave it. Otherwise, I put it inside a bowl with some ice. Let it cool, you know, stay cool and use when you need it in a restaurant or whatever but we're home and we're gonna use it right away so you caramelized onions super we're just done I'm just gonna let these hang out back there and let's check on these oh yeah these are done too don't touch that that is hot and I'm just gonna let these kind of hang out on the cutting board Ah, shoot. Okay, just getting the uh, dish pan cleaned out a little bit so the smoke alarm doesn't go off again. Let's check in on the potatoes here. Those should be done soon. I keep this place in the fork. I don't know if you guys do that too when you cook. Put something down and you can't remember where it is. Okay, so I got these potatoes cut up. Oh, I've got one. Um, in quarters. They're new potatoes. And I'm gonna need about five more minutes. Okay, so we got our onions done and they're holding. We have our really great puree done, and that's holding. We got the garlic for the mashed potatoes here. And we got cream cheese and sour cream for the mashed potatoes. This is all done on the mashed potatoes. We got the pork in the oven, start of the show. It's at almost 100 degrees, so we're getting there. Probably another 10 minutes or so. We got our nice apples ready for the plate. And everything's done. That, that, that looks great right there. That's the side you want to present right there. And that one's all burnt, so I'm not going to use that one. Okay. So let me know where you guys are all from right now. Where are you watching from? Let me know how you're liking it so far. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. If you don't like it, let me know how I can make it better. Cooking for you, not cooking for me. Um, let's see here. So this is one of the really few rare breaks in cooking. So when the potatoes are ready, I'm going to put them in a bowl. Actually, I'm going to use the same, the same pot. So let me show you this. So this is a dessert dispensing set. Uh, it's a really cool device. It's a cylinder and it's a press. And usually for desserts, and when you make want to make layers, you've probably seen the finished product this whole time. And how do you get it into a perfect cylinder? This is it. I'm actually going to use this for the potatoes. And the way that's going to work is 
this goes on the plate, potatoes go in, this goes down, lift this up, and take it off. We got a really nice presentation for the potatoes. Hey Vito, come here. I want you to taste something. Yeah. This is the peach puree. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give it a taste and tell everybody how, how it tastes. I really taste it a lot. Yeah? You like it? Yeah, I like it. You like I it a lot? that all day. You could just eat it like that, right? <laughs> like a soup? Yeah, that's really good. Thank you. So next week we're making uh, gnocchi in a cream sauce, which is going to be phenomenal. And in a couple next couple episodes we have a grilled Caesar romaine, which I'm calling Caesar's wedge. Uh, we'll make a cool thing with that, and I haven't announced it yet, but we are going to make a tiramisu in that same episode. So stay tuned for that. We have octopus coming in a couple of weeks, and we're using a pressure cooker for that because I need, you know, that could take a long time, so I have to use a pressure cooker for the show, which is fine, it'll, it'll taste the same. And then we'll finish it off on the grill here. Uh, I mix that with some Israeli couscous with an open pesto, maybe some grilled vegetables, we'll see. Um, and then in, in we got pumpkin tortelli, so we're gonna be roasting some pumpkin and making a nice pumpkin, um, filling for tortelli, very similar to what we made last week with the tortelli quattro formaggi, which is four cheese tortelli, except it's going to be a pumpkin filling. So got a lot of cool stuff coming up in December. I'm making tag fresh tagliatelle with uh, a rabbit ragu. So if you haven't had rabbit, it's really good. It's, it's basically like a sweet chicken, very mild, very mild on the sweet side. Uh, it's not like super sweet, like dessert. It's just hair sweeter than chicken and it's really really good okay these potatoes are probably done burning my hand on that water so it's important with these I'm, I'm not um, mashing them per se like taking a blender to it or you know stuff like that I'm really just gonna stir it vigorously to mash it up so you want to make sure they're fully cooked and tender okay so give that a couple more minutes this is the it's over left over the simple syrups so now I could strain this and have peach infused simple syrup which should be excellent for cocktails so I'm gonna do that after the show <laughs> that's really good okay we got the pork in the oven we got 106 degrees on the pork, so we got about 10 minutes left in the pork, maybe a little less, 107, it's climbing good. Pulling it at 140. What we did with the pork is we seared it on both sides in the cast iron uh, until it was nice and golden, and then we threw it right in the oven. The oven set to 325, and we're gonna let that go to temperature. So I'm pulling it at 140, so it finishes around 145, 148-ish range, um, which is perfect for pork. We did brine the pork or, um, for about seven hours in the simple brine, just water, sugar, and salt, and, um, and it seared it. So let's go ahead and drain these potatoes. I think I'm off camera now, so I'm just draining them right in my colander in the sink and then dumping the potatoes right back in the pot. It's okay if there's a little bit of liquid in there. It's either going to uh, burn off, but a little bit of liquid's okay too because it will um, help keep it moist. So, garlic goes in, lots of garlic. We got cream cheese. Put that in. This is a bar, I think eight ounces of cream cheese. That's really the that's really the thing right there. And then we will add a little bit of sour cream. It's like a dollop or two. And then we will add some salt and pepper. So 
healthy dose of salt, and pepper. Crack, 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 pepper, and we stir. This is hot, I think. So this is my smashing right here. I'm just kind of taking a spoon, going around until it's roughly together. So there'll be a, a one or two whole pieces. Skins right on here. These are new potatoes, the red petite potatoes. And really creamy, really garlicky, really tasty. And that's it. Smashed potatoes. So what we're going to do is taste it. We're going to taste it because we just need to see if it needs any salt or pepper or anything. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Garlic's raw. And that's intentional. Just going to mix a little bit more. Pot's hot. All right, coming together here. So we got our onions done. We got our peach puree done. We got our mashed potatoes done. And to keep these warm, what we're going to do is just keep the cover on. That's it. Okay, how are we doing with pork? Pork's going a little slow tonight. We got 115, 116. Okay, so we still got some time on the pork. Why don't you fire off any questions if you have any right now? If anything related to cooking. You'll notice I didn't add any salt to the onions here because I wanted the moisture to be held in. When it comes to salting, you have two choices. You could salt with, or you could, you know, in the beginning, when you first put it in the pan, or you could salt at the end. And your outcome is really what you're looking for is what you decide to do. So because I wanted these to kind of cook slowly and caramelize with sugars, I wanted to keep the moisture in. So I didn't add any salt and that helps the sugar then come caramelized like this. But now that these are done, I'm going to add a hint of salt. I'll stir this up. If I wanted the veggies, if the veggies are going in like tacos or you know, sauteing some vegetables, something like that, then I will salt in the beginning. And anytime you add something, you add a little salt. So that's kind of like knowing when to salt is kind of important in the outcome too. My meter probe is telling me I got eight minutes left. So I'm going to get ready here. This is the plate. These are the garnishes for later. Okay. Oh, scallions. Shoot. Good thing we got time. Totally forgot the scallions. I wanted scallions in the potatoes. So we're going to do this right now. Chop up these scallions. I knew I was missing something. Okay, that's going to go into the potatoes, like these, okay, when I'm like right here, so that's, that's for the potatoes, this is for the pork, so I'm actually going to cut these smaller. as garnish of the pork. Okay. So let's get the scallions in the potatoes here. Bloop.
really making a mess tonight. Okay, I knew I was creating something. So skeletons are in now, which will make it much, much better. See, they're still piping hot. So let's cover these back up. Let's come back here and get ready. Ready for the plate. We got five minutes until this pork is ready. I use the back of my knife to do that, okay? Because I don't want to dull the blade. A little, a little tip there. So this is what I'm gonna do for the plate. Okay. So, puree is gonna go here, and pretty big. Because I want the puree to come out from the side of the pork, so you see that on the contrast. And then I'm just going to drag a little bit this way, and then I'm going to place the potatoes over here, somewhere, and probably put drop some more drops of that, and then put the peaches along here nicely, and then uh, top the pork with the caramelized onions, and top the potatoes. Let's put the potatoes right in here. Okay, and then I'm going to top the potatoes and the pork with a little bit of the scallions. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting hungry and it's smelling good. So, come on pork. Porky, 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 pork, pork. Let's cook. We're at 127. If this was beef, we'd be done. Oh, let's some comments. Yeah, let's give me some comments. Name and comment. Steve is in Corm. All right, Steve. Thanks for tuning in from Long Island, my hometown. Sage from Miami. Sage is from Miami. Thank you, Sage, for tuning in again. Um, Shannon Everhart says, did you, just, did you just say before, when you were talking about the rabbit, that it was a hair sweeter? Yes, it, it. Shannon. Joke. It was a hair sweeter, yes. <laughs> the rabbit. The rabbit's really good. If you guys haven't had rabbit yet, I highly suggest you make a dish, rabbit, um, or next time you're at a restaurant. It's hard to find here uh, in, a, in a restaurant on a plate, but if you ever are at a restaurant and you see rabbit on the menu, order it. I don't care how it's being prepared, order it and taste it. You won't regret it. And Nick Steele wants to know who does the dishes. Nick wants to know who does the dishes. We're, this is a cooking show, not a cleaning show, Nick. Maybe... Uh, Maybe Miss Bruno will do the cleaning show of this. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, Nick. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We just hit 900 followers on uh, Facebook, on Guys Home Kitchen Facebook page, which is awesome. We started a group uh, called People Who Cook, where everyone's sharing what they're cooking and posting pictures and getting advice and... Uh, getting ideas and you know getting recipes post sharing recipes it's a really great group so I highly suggest you go just type in people who cook to Facebook and you'll in, in the search and you could see the group and just join um, and also I wanted to make a quick mention uh, the music you heard in the very very beginning plus the intro to guys home kitchen was uh, made by one of my very good friends Nick Donnelly uh, we grew up together he was actually my bridal party um, and he's a very successful composer doing big things for big brands. I won't name any, um, but he's super, super talented. The music's awesome. Um, so if you're ever in need for a composer, check it out. I'll, I'll put the link in the description. I think I'm supposed to say the links in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. So you always get notified of all the new shows coming up and we got three minutes left on the meter app. This is the meter app. I'll show you guys this. Let me know if this comes through. Too bright? Well, we could fix that. No, we can't. How about that? No? Which way?
This is how we hang pictures in this house. <laughs> Straight close up. <laughs> so that gives us a little bit of an idea. Okay, that's the app. It's a really cool app. It's called Meter. Um, it's it's all Bluetooth, and then you have Wi-Fi versions now. Um, so there's no wire sticking out of the oven. The probe is right in the meat, and then all my gauges is right here. You tell it what you're cooking. You tell it what temperature you want it done at, and then it, it does its thing and it tells you. It's got an ambient temperature on there too. Um, and um, it also gives recommendations for cook times and stuff like that. It's really, really cool and really handy. You could you could connect it to the Wi-Fi, you know. So you have a cloud version. So if you're going to the store, you can check the temperature from your phone at the store, which is really cool. Um, so it's, it's really, really good. It's my one of my favorite probe thermometers. We're at 135. We're getting there. We're gonna pull it at 140. It's at 135 right now. You need to be patient because I don't want to undercook it a little bit. It's still going to be pink on the inside. That's okay with pork. It's not raw. It's not undercooked. There's no diseases. This isn't 1960 anymore where you have to cook the pork to 200 degrees and it'd be tough and dry. This is why a lot of people don't like their mom pork chops because they overcooked them. That's it. You overcooked it, mom. Sorry. But <laughs> we're cooking it here and we're cooking it well. And we're brined it which is really the secret. Anytime you cook pork or poultry, do a wet brine, and, and the, the, the meat is gonna taste more moist and more flavorful than you ever tasted before. All right, this is the first time I'm waiting on food. Usually it's waiting on me. Well, comment from Kelly, Tim uh, made Mongolian beef. Nice. Forgot to take a pic of it, but Yeah, Mongolian beef is excellent. Good job, Tim. Next time, take pictures and share it in the uh, People Who Cook group. Okay? I'm just giving my puree a quick stir because it's starting to get a little film on the top. I don't want that on the plate. Don, I'm going to need your phone in a little bit because I want to take a picture of this before we eat into this later. Yeah. Okay, we're at 138. Two more degrees, and I can take it out. I got my onions right here. I got this here. Let me grab the potatoes. Got the potatoes here. And I'm going to need a little bit of the oil. Those potatoes do not stick. This is Brian. Get this out of the way. And the moment you've all been waiting for. Ah, oh, yes. You hear that? Yeah, that's good. Look at that. It's at 140 degrees right now. Remember, this is the pork loin, so like the New York strip version of the cut. We got a bone in here. This is like a T-bone or porterhouse because it's so thick. It's a double cut, so about twice as thick as you normally get. Usually like two bones worth. It's a little bit less than two bones, but what are you going to do with the butcher? So this is the pork tenderloin side, which is the, um, like the filet mignon of pork, which, by the way, is cheaper and better, in my opinion, than pork loin chops. So if you're in the store, get the pork tenderloin, skip, skip the chops, and you won't be sorry. It is much, much better. We have a question. Yes. Sage wants to know how long to be wet brine. Okay, that's an excellent question, Sage. Sage wants to know how long to wet brine. Well, there's a lot of variables that go into that. If you're making the traditional uh, ratios of like four to two to one, so four parts, four, four parts water, two parts salt, one part sugar. Um, for this type of cut, that thickness, probably like 12 hours, you know, overnight, uh, no more than 24. Um, I didn't do mine until this morning at 11, 
So to compensate for that, I added more salt and sugar and I let it go for seven hours. So it'll have, it won't need as long, much time to absorb all, all that brine. If you're doing a whole, like a whole chicken, you're looking like at a day or two, probably at least 24 hours, one to two days. Uh, I brine my turkey for Thanksgiving and I'll have that in a cooler full of ice and water and the brine, obviously the brine, and then I dump ice in it to keep everything cool. And usually that's sitting there for like three, four, maybe five days for turkey, for like something that size. So it really just depends on the size of the meat, the type of meat, and the potency of the brine. Um, but if you're making just a normal uh, potency of brine, then just overnight is usually the rule. Uh, if you do, if you go too long, it's better to go a little bit shorter than longer because if you go too long, then it's going to be too salty, and then you're not going to eat it. You're not going to want to eat it. Um, so, anyway, we are at 144 degrees, which is perfect. So, Can you that after? this no, I didn't. Okay. This has all the seasoning it needs. Um, I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw a little cracked pepper on here once I get the onions on, but it doesn't really need anything at that point. All the flavors inside. If I didn't brine it, yes, I would have put salt and pepper on it before I seared it and put it in the oven. Um, and we're at 144 degrees right now. So time to remove the probe here and start plating. Okay, here we go. First, we will take the puree. So the sweetness from the puree is going to match savory with pork. And it's a big hunk of meat, so I'm putting a lot of puree on here because I you'll see why. Okay. Now I'm gonna take this, put this on here, just like that. Look at that. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my, let's put the potatoes in the corner. And we could put the peaches over here. Okay, so potatoes. Where are you, spoon? Spoon, stop running away on me. Okay, I'm going to grab some potatoes here. What I'm doing is I'm just going to fill this feel 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 okay now so it doesn't stick on me I'm going to take just a little bit of oil rub that on there I'm going to press this down Not, you don't want to get too much pressure, but there we go. And the oil, look at that, look how beautiful that is. The oil is what helps that come up right away. Now, we will take peaches. Peaches right there, like that. Okay, and then for the old design dots. Okay, and then we will take some scallions. Put that on there, nice like that. And then, last but not least, this, we will take our onions, put the onions on here just like this. Look at that. That pile of goodness right there. Whoop, we don't want that down there. I want that in the presentation like that. Okay. Great. 
You know what I'm going to do also? I'm going to take the nutmeg and just very gently sprinkle it on to the puree here like this. Just like that. Like that. And then we'll take the cinnamon and go. There we go. We're done. We have pork, double cut pork with caramelized onions, with a peach puree, with garlic smashed potatoes, and some peaches on the side. Can I set the phone? Okay, because this is the only one I'm making tonight. So I am going to take a picture right this second. I need to work on my photography skills. This looks damn good though. Imagine you getting served this in a restaurant. You'd be happy. Vito, would you be happy if, you, if this was your dish? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Vito, let's taste. Here's your fork. I'll cut a piece for you, okay? Okay, let's take, um, why don't you try a little bit of the potatoes first? You want me to potatoes? Hmm? Okay, right there. I really like potatoes, and this makes it ten times better. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Let's... Go over here and I'm going to cut out the best part, in my opinion, which is a tenderloin. Okay. Let's show people the inside. Look at the inside of that. You see that? You're in the close up? That is a perfectly cooked pork. Okay. So, let's cut off a little piece for you. Dunk in a little bit of the puree. Get some onions too, okay? okay? I'll taste it with you. It's pork, puree. Mmm. It's a match made in heaven. Good? I probably went too heavy on the puree. What are you gonna do? Okay, let's get some onions on this. The puree is my favorite part. Yeah? Maybe I should just give you a bowl of puree. <laughs> you know? I would be happy about that. Yeah? Mmm. Looks really good. All right, guys. That's it. Here's our dish. Mmm. Now that's saucy, baby. All right? I'll see you next week for gnocchi. Until then, stay saucy.